What's up guys and welcome to another crack pack video. Today we're opening up a pack of Lorwyn. This is not something that we get to open very often so I could not be more excited about this. Uh, I'm actually not going to be looking at the value of cards in this set. Uh, I think I'm going to stop doing that just in general. I think it'll be exciting to pull something fun but not really have a goal so much as uh, looking at things from a limited perspective which I really do enjoy. And we are going to do that again. Uh, in this video, of course. So we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one would be uh, in a limited scenario. I'm not the best drafter. I also did not play during Lorwyn, uh, so I have no clue what's actually good, but we'll do the best we can. So kicking it off, we have an Herbal Poultice. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a zero mana artifact, uh, and then you can pay three and sacrifice it to regenerate target creature. This is not really an exciting card, I don't think. Uh, I can't imagine this being good in any limited scenario. Uh, I think probably there are issue, there are like instances where you would use it as a zero mana artifact in some weird constructed deck, but even then, I don't think it's very good. So, uh, Avian Changeling. Uh, a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a white. It has Changeling, which means this is a creature of every type, not just uh, Shapeshifter, which is printed here, and it has Flying. Uh, this is actually just a really good on-par creature. It's a 2-2 two -two flyer. Uh, it, it works, it synergizes, I should say, with any tribal deck, uh, which I believe there are a few tribal decks in this set, so uh, I imagine that this is actually pretty pretty solid. Uh, Warren Pilfers is a 3-3 three, three for 4 and a black. When it comes into play, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. If that card was a goblin card, uh, the Warren Pilfers gains haste until end of turn. Uh, this card's great in the goblin deck. It's absolutely fantastic. I like it more uh, than the Avian Changelings as well. I think this is really your perfect kind of top-end card for the, uh, for the, excuse me, the red-black uh, Goblins deck, which is awesome. I love that deck. Uh, Lowland Oaf is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a red. I love these cards so much. Um, uh, it, you can tap it and target Goblin creature you control gains plus 1, plus 0, and gains flying until end of turn. You then sacrifice that creature at the end of the turn. Again, this is a good, fairly decent, I would say, top-end card for the Goblins deck. Uh, it lets you get in for some extra damage, which the issue with goblins is that it tends to either be outpowered or just outclassed by creatures, and so eventually this kind of helps you kind of dig out of that situation by basically saying, okay, well, you also, not only do you have to have a stronger ground creature, you need to have something in the air that's going to be able to block this, uh, and hopefully by that point you'll have dug through some damage uh, and gotten your opponent close enough that you can swing with one or two hits and actually finish them off. So I love this card a lot. I think I like the pilfers better. Uh, I like the recursion of that a little bit more, uh, but that might be the incorrect pick, I'm not sure. Uh, Fistful of Force, one and a green for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. You then clash with an opponent. Uh, if you win, that creature gets an additional plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of the turn. Uh, if you don't know what clashing does, each player reveals the top card of his or her deck. Uh, you put that card on... Oop, hold on one second. Then puts that card on the top or bottom. A player wins if his or her card has a higher converted mana cost. Excuse me. I could not see via the camera strap, which is annoyingly in the way right now. Uh, this is a really good uh, just uh, combat trick, basically. Uh, essentially, there is no downside to this. If you clash and win, there's a very, very large upside. Uh, giving not only plus two plus two, but then an additional plus two plus two and trample is huge, especially for only two mana at instant speed. So this is a great combat trick. Uh, I don't like taking combat tricks early though, just personal preference. Uh, Aether Snipe, this card's awesome. A 4-4 four, four for 5 and a blue. When it comes into play, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. You can also evoke it for 1 and 2 blue, uh, which means when you play the spell with, for the evoke cost, if you do sacrifice it when it comes into play. Essentially what this means is you can play this for 6 as a 4-4 four, four that bounces a non-land permanent. Keep in mind it's non-land permanent, not just creature or anything like that. Uh, or you can evoke it, meaning basically you bounce a non-land permanent and then this immediately dies. Uh, which, honestly, both of them are good. So, I really like this card. I think that's going to be my pick so far. Uh, sorry, by the way, if the audio gets a little jumbled. The mic is falling. I'm trying a new setup and it's going super well. Uh, <laughs> Scarred Vine Breeder is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. You can pay 2 and a black. Remove an elf card in your graveyard from the game. Uh, Scarred Vine Breeder gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. 
This is a great elf card. Uh, again, that tribal synergy is really, really powerful. I'm not a fan of this over the Aether Snipe, though. Uh, I think Aether Snipe is still the card for me. Uh, Guilt Leaf Seer, two and a green for a 2-2. You can pay a green and tap it, look at the top two cards of your library, then put them back in any order. Uh, this essentially smooths out your draws, ideally. Uh, obviously, you're still going to be drawing... Your, it's out of two cards. It's not some crazy filter effect or anything like that, but it is pretty powerful if you get this online early. Uh, and you can start filtering your draws very, very quickly. It's only one mana, which is really not that bad. Uh, and you can leave this up as a blocker on your opponent's turn, and then at the end of their turn, uh, if you have the opportunity, you can use this. I actually really like this card. Uh, I don't think it's better than Aether Snipe, but I still think it's quite powerful. Uh, Protective Bubble. I love the art. Uh, three and a blue for an enchanted creature. Uh, the creature is unblockable and has Shroud, which means no player can target it with any spell or ability. Uh, this is really, really powerful, honestly. Um, normally, I hate enchanted creatures. We've talked about that a lot, but giving it Shroud means it's really, really tough to actually target that creature. You have to go through the enchantment to actually kill the creature, unless you are sweeping the board or using some kind of non-targeted removal. Uh, otherwise, it, it's just insane. So I love this card, actually. Um, I would rather have a big creature to tie it to first before picking it, uh, but it is really, really powerful. Uh, Ingot Shure, a very good card. 3-3 three, three for 4 and a red. Seems bad, but when it comes into play, you destroy target artifact. And again, this has evokes, so you can pay 1 red and uh, play it, get the effect, and then it immediately dies. This is a really good constructed card, not so good, uh, unfortunately, in limited. That being said, uh, it's not bad sideboard if there happens to be an artifact uh, that is basically giving you a problem on the other end of the field, and you're in red, then this is a great option for you. I do not like it in limited, just in general, though. Uh, Amiaboid Changeling, I, again, I hope I'm saying that correctly. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It's a Changeling, again, uh, and you can tap it. Target creature gains all creature types until end of turn, or tap it. Target creature loses all creature types until end of turn. I do not like this card. The art is really creepy, uh, but it's funny nonetheless. Uh, our first uncommon, Tree Folk Harbinger. It is one green for a 0-3. When it comes into play, you may search your library for a Tree Folk or a Forest card, reveal it, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. Uh, not a fan of this. It's fine in a Tree Folk deck. Uh, it also just kind of smooths out your lands. Uh, but other than that, really not too exciting. Uh, Bogart Shenanigans. Uh, tribal Enchantment Goblins for two and a red. So whenever another goblin you control is put into the graveyard from play, you may have the shenanigans deal one damage to target player. This is a great way to throw in additional damage against some uh, against opposing decks if you are in a goblin deck. Uh, I think this is a really good payoff for the goblin deck as well. I'm not sure if it's better. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Vivid Marsh, a land, uh, comes into play tapped with two charge counters on it. You can tap it and add black to your mana pool or tap it and remove a counter from it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This is... A, a cycle, they, they have one of these for each color, but they basically were rainbow lands for the first couple times you use them if you needed them to be, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. I love these. Um, great to pick up in limited, honestly, uh, especially if you're in two colors, which you oftentimes will be. Uh, this is These are really, really good. All of them are. Uh, and then our rare is Brian, Brian uh, Stout Arm. Brian. I'm going to say Brian. I uh, know that's not correct. It's a 4-4 four, four for 2, a red, and a white. It has a lifelink, uh, and you can pay a red and tap it, sacrifice a creature other than uh, the stout arm, <laughs> and it deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to target player. Uh, this definitely blows these cards out of the water. This thing is hugely powerful, uh, and definitely the pick in my opinion. By all means, let me know if you disagree in the comment section below, but I do think this is definitely the correct pick. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, and I really hope the audio is okay, uh, then please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, and of course, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Back video.